Good morning and welcome to Wayne State Fieldhouse, where one of the hottest teams in the G League is trying to keep it going. Motor City Crews have won three in a row and seven out of the last 11. They're taking on the Greensboro Swarm in the final game of a five game homestand. Welcome high above courtside. Hope you're well caffeinated by now and ready to watch a little basketball. He's Reggie Butler, I'm Evan Stockton alongside the rest of our great crew. So Reggie, the Crews, as we were just talking about, they're playing great ball. But today is different, right? You're playing at 11 in the morning on Education Day. You're playing the same team, not quite a back-to-back, -back, but you did just play 7 o'clock on Monday night, so a quick turnaround. How do you think the crews are going to handle some of these challenges today? Yeah, absolutely. I think they're going to come out enthused. They have the kids here in the crowd. It's going to be the loudest it's been. And also, you have confidence because you just beat the Swarm Monday. Yeah, this team just beat Oklahoma City in back-to-back -back games Friday night, Saturday night, and now they try to pull off another back-to-back. -back. It is going to be tough, though, Reggie. As we talked about in our broadcast on Monday night, this is a swarm team with a lot of NBA talent, including the man we'll highlight. Teo Maladon, the 21-year-old from Rouen, France, he showed some flashes the other night. When this guy's rolling, he can really play basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's a very good guard. I mean, he has nice pace to him. He gets in the middle of the key there. You see with the good floater over the defender, he can shoot the ball. He's a good defender. He's, a, he's an NBA-level player. There's a bunch of NBA-level NBA players on both rosters. The well-traveled Kiefer Sykes for the Motor City Crews. If you are looking for a specific man who is the reason why the Motor City Crews are playing great basketball, Reggie, honestly, it may be this man. He stuffs the stat sheet every single night. <laughs> he does. Since he's been healthy and come back from the hamstring injury, the Crews have been a different team. He's been a player who's shot the three well. He plays well in the mid-range. He's a great ball handler, and he shares the love. He's averaging almost nine assists a game. I mean, usually the type of guy you figure to be a triple-double watch every night is James Harden, LeBron James, guy slightly bigger than Kiefer Sykes. How did he grab eight rebounds the other night? Heart, they always say, heart over height. <laughs> And that has never been more true than the way that Keeper Sykes play basketball. Pour another coffee, go get yourself a, a couple more scrambled eggs, and let's have some fun. Education day from Wayne State Fieldhouse. Motor City Crews and Greensboro Swarm. Head coach DJ Baker for the Crews joins us when you come on back to downtown Detroit. In the NBA, what's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the cluck, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou. Come on, really? Hey, Demar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got them. This is the non-stop, never born, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip-off. Good morning, and welcome back to Wayne State Fieldhouse. Early tip time for us today. Greensboro Swarm back to take on the Motor City Crews. Evan Stockton, DJ Baker. Coach, first thing, you awake? You good to go? I'm, I'm good to go. Up nice and early. Uh, coaches weren't here early, so uh, we're excited to get this last game before our break. How does this early start time affect prep, or if at all, today? Uh, no, I mean, yesterday, you know, we, we did a lot of our, we almost had our shoot around yesterday. You know, we didn't have one this morning. So, uh, met as a coaching staff, uh, watched the film with the players, um, and then uh, walked through a few things offensively, a few, a few things defensively, and, and then came in here this morning, and guys are going through their shooting routines and pregame routines. But, you know, we normally practice at this time, so, you know, it's not, it's not too far different from what we normally do. So the body clocks are kind of going all right. Yeah, yeah, we normally practice at 11 a.m., so we're pretty much pretty good to go, you know. Coach's team is playing really good basketball right now. They've won three games in a row. Just beat Greensboro on Monday night. You know, what you wanted from your team the other day was rebounding, and that's what you got. You all rebounded Greensboro by 13. Yeah. What, was, what was clicking for you guys the other night? Uh, I think it was just the focus and execution that we needed. Like, we, we get, you know, we kind of simplify a game plan, the keys to win on both sides of the ball that our guys need to do. And, uh, and obviously, rebounding was a huge point of emphasis, and that allowed us uh, to get into our running game and our transition offense, which we've been uh, emphasizing more and more. Uh, so, you know, they, they just did a good job focusing on it, making a point of it, and executing very well. Yeah, and another thing you guys executed well the other day, 
held Greensboro down from shooting from deep. They only shot about 28, 30% in know. that game. Yeah. What schematically were you doing to make them shoot poorly the other night? Just really emphasizing our closeouts, like early positioning, proper positioning with our players, uh, pivoting, sprinting, just a lot of technique things in order for us to go out there. And we want to force misses. Just because they're a good shooting team, we want to we want to have great shot contests and have the mentality of we're forcing them to miss. So early positioning, great great uh, great shrinks, and then closing out with the stick hand up and, and and having proper technique on that to take away their shots. A guy who was amazing the other day for the crews, Jalen Johnson had his best game of the season, 31 points and 10 rebounds. What worked for him the other day? Yeah, he's just finding a good rhythm, you know. I mean, he's stayed ready the entire year, but now, you know, he's getting a heavy dose of the minutes at the center position, um, which he hasn't had. So he's found his rhythm. Uh, guys feel very comfortable playing with him. Obviously, he can screen, he can roll, he can pop, he can shoot, he can finish around the basket, he can handle, he can pass. I mean, he's very, very versatile on the offensive end, so he's a hard guy to defend because he can score from so score and play make from so many different uh, spots on the floor. So just a really versatile player for us offensively. Right now, this is the best you guys have looked all year. You've won three in a row, seven out of the last 11. From your side of things, what has led to all this good play recently? Uh, I think even when we were losing, I think we started the regular season off one and seven. You know, During that period, there was no given. There was no lack of buy-in, lack of commitment. There was a, a daily hunger for improvement. Even when we were in our losing streak, I saw us getting better. Like the games were a lot closer. Like before we kind of broke through and started winning more games, our losses were a lot better losses, if that makes sense. You know, we weren't down by 20 ever. We were in a bunch of close games. So I thought we were making progress and improvement. The guys continue to uh, believe and their commitment to player development and improving each and every day and trusting us coaches, you know, uh, they never wavered in that. And we kind of stayed together, stayed connected as a group. We have a long ways to go. We still have a lot of things we have to improve on, um, but we're trending in the right way, and we just got to continue that today. I mean, and what you're saying is what's going through the entire organization. Obviously, the Pistons would like a few more wins up there, but the point for them, I'd imagine, right, is play all the young guys, get as much experience as you can. You wish Cade could play, and yeah, he wasn't yeah. hurt, but and that's kind of the point up there and down here, right? Just getting the guys' minutes and, and seeing how they can develop all year. Yeah, it, it takes time to learn how to win at this league, at the NBA level especially when you have young guys. Like it's, there's a growing experience that only can happen through losses. You have to learn how to lose before you can win. And that's just how it goes. We lost really bad early on in the, in the year. And then we started losing a lot of close games. Like, oh, okay, we're getting better. And now we're starting to win some of those close games in these overtime games. So it's a process, it's a commitment to it, especially for the young guys. There, there's an, a, there's a, a growth process that happens and you can't fast track it. You can watch film. You can practice, you can study, um, but they have to go through it. They have to experience it. And now our guys, the, the, the switch is flipped for them a little bit, and, uh, you know, they're looking more and more comfortable. So we just got to continue trending on that, on that upward way. And the last thing we have for Coach, it's education day. Are you ready for a lot of kids to scream on made three-pointers and dunks? Oh, I can't wait. I can't. <laughs> it, it, it'll be a lot of uh, youthful energy in here, a loud gym. And I tell you what, the, the fan base on Friday and Saturday, was off the chart and Monday and Monday for like our our, our crowd the last three games has, has been incredible uh, it's fun to have a reaction for intense games and now with the kids in here today it's gonna be a whole different level so uh, we're excited to have them in here today it's gonna be a lot of fun if you weren't awake before all these kids start screaming you're gonna be awake today coach yeah, no appreciate question. you good luck today thank you let's have some basketball from Wayne State Fieldhouse coming up grab that coffee grab a donut let's have some fun Swarm and Cruz wrapping up a five-game homestand. Cruz looking to close it out with a win. It starts next.
Oh, with a finish. Elbow foul. Welcome to Wayne State Fieldhouse, filled with kids playing hooky from school on Education Day. This is going to be a fun environment. Evan Stockton, Reggie Butler, glad you're making a little time for us on a Wednesday. Hopefully you're not playing hooky from work. You've cleared it with your boss to watch this game. You're doing illegally. Thanks, too. We appreciate it. Reggie, as we've been talking about, the crews are playing great basketball. They've won seven of their last 11 games, three in a row. Got a chance here to make it four out of five wins on the homestand. As we look at the starting lineups, no changes for both teams today. David Nawaba is not playing for the Crews for the second straight game. We've already talked about Kiefer Sykes, but for the Crews in that starting five, who do we need to focus on today? Well, you obviously want to focus on Kiefer Sykes with the with the Crews and for the for the Swarm. You have so many guys. You got <laughs> Maladon, Book Knight, and they're both such explosive guards. The crews are going to have to contain them because they're going to be looking for revenge from the other night. You know, you kept talking on Monday night about Book Knight, and you, you were waiting for him to take over. He never did quite take over. Feels like this may be the type of game the former Utah Husky can take over. It might be because when you're at the park and the playground growing up, what happens when you lose? What's the first thing somebody says? Run it back. Yep. <laughs> so, and that's the game you got to worry about them. And so, I think that uh, these swarm guys are some run it back type of guys. But the crews, you know, <laughs> look what we're talking about. Look how well they played. Roden, Sykes, and they're going to be up for the challenge. As custom in the G League, the jerseys look a lot like the parent club does. The crews jerseys, at a glance, look like those Pistons jerseys they wear often at home. The awesome blue, white, and red. Greensboro in the teal, purple, and white that look like the Charlotte Hornets. They put you, they put you in the color so you, you can get a feel. You're close. You're one step away from the NBA, and, you know, all you have to do is come out here and produce. We actually had a false start on the tip-off, so the Crews will inbound the basketball to kick off the game. Trayvon Palmer will inbound. He's starting for the second straight game for the Crews. Had a pretty good night on Monday. 12 points and eight rebounds in that 15-point win. Palmer is a guy, you know, I listened to um, Eric Thomas, the motivational speaker, and he talks, he kind of describes with his flight assessment different kind of guys. And Palmer's what you would call a grounds crew. Gets the bags, puts snacks on the planes, does a little bit of everything in a crew, and that's exactly what he does for the Crews. Tried to go inside to Jalen Johnson on the first possession of the game. It didn't work. And Greensboro opened the scoring. Corner three, and Xavier Sneed missed it. Scored 22 points on Monday night. Jaron Roden getting inside on Sneed. Roden, who had a great start the other night, he's going to look to get off to a good one tonight. Jalen Johnson off 31 on Monday night, opens the scoring this morning. Yep, and with the kids in here, he has a little bit more juice in the legs. But as you mentioned, he played phenomenal the other night, was really the MVP of the game. And he wants to get himself established tonight, today. Don't forget about the 10 rebounds that Jalen Johnson grabbed on Monday night, too. It was a double-double. 
Yeah. He was a monster on the boards. At, what was it, three or four offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter that really sealed the game? Yeah, and remember, the Crews were only up by one point at halftime in that game. Jalen Johnson was the reason they won that ball game all of a sudden by 15. This is Kiefer Sykes, and he's going to the line. Absolutely. Good job by Sykes. He's so hard to guard because he's such a low player. How do you stay in front of a guy who's attacking your knees <laughs> as opposed to your chest? You'll see here. He brings it down. He starts to get low right now. Starts to get low. And that's that's not a fancy move. That's just, hey, I can get lower than you. Um, I always say shoulder beats leg every time. Kiefer Sykes, a stat sheet stuffer. In case you missed that stat line on Monday, 16 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds. He's 6 feet and nearly had a triple double. Yeah, and he could jump, though. We'll probably see a time or two tonight where he just out jumps everybody, and you're going to be like, where did that come from? Maladone, a nice job there to get Jalen Johnson in the air. Basket back for the Swarm. Palmer will let it go. <laughs> Buddy Beheim, the back tap on the rebound. Rode in, lost it, got it back, and got fouled. Nope, travel, wave it off. Yep, I think they said the Swarm player was able to get his hand over top of the ball, so good defense by the Swarm. Roden's wondering if there was a foul before the travel. <laughs> of course. All players wonder. And it was. He got hit on the arm, but this is big boy basketball, and Roden is up to the test. Crutcher from a long way away, in and out. The Crutcher, he played well. He played great the other night as well. Didn't finish the game as strong as he started, so I'm sure that's in the back of his mind. I mean, well, they were only down one, he was a big factor. Sykes got rejected. Book Knight on the go. Followed up, tied the game. And I'm sure, and this is probably the loudest that either team has played a game with as G League games average maybe between 500 up to 3,000 people, but a few thousand kids is much louder than a few hundred adults. <laughs> The, uh, the pitch of the voice is just a little bit higher than a, than a full grown-up voice. Just Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. I got two sons, and I mean, it sounds like it's 10 of them in the <laughs> house. <laughs> Miss for Maladone, so it stays a tie game. Galen Johnson's got that ball on the elbow. He's going to work, missing the shot. Maladone tapped the rebound to himself. Crutcher coming up the floor. Maladone found Book Knight, and he's got four in a row. Yep, and the Swarm are doing a good job of moving the ball around. You saw Crutcher, who could have taken that layup, but he didn't. He passed it around it. That's the easiest way to um, score and move the defense, is move the ball. 6-0 run for the Swarm here. Sykes looking for a little room to operate. Kiefer will let it go. A little bit short on that step back. And you won't see Sykes take many threes, per se, but he, he likes to usually start off with getting in the mid-range, hitting shots, then he'll move to the threes. Isaiah Whaley hits the three for Greensboro. 9-0 run for the road team. We, we mentioned how they wanted to run it back, and so they're coming out really motivated today. Palmer alone. Answer for the Cruz. Palmer, the ground crew, always there when you need something. <laughs> that gives those voices a chance to let loose on a made three from the corner. <laughs> when the crews get their first dunk, I think this place is going to go wild. Whaley hit another one. We were watching the dunks and warm-ups, and on every single one, it was very loud. Yeah, absolutely. It was very loud. <laughs> absolutely. So at 11 a.m. game, you might have players who are a little sluggish. Hey, they haven't played at 11 a.m. since AAU. <laughs> back in high school, but with the kids out here cheering, it gave them a little bit more juice. Roden's got to make something happen here. Hoist it up through tough defense. That's a shot clock violation. You know, it's interesting, Reggie. We did ask DJ Baker before the game, right? How is this start time potentially going to affect you? He said, well, we practice at 11 a.m. every day anyway, so... We're basically ready to go at this time. Greensboro is ready to go right now on an elongated run, and they got an early lead a few minutes into the basketball game.
Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Wrapping up a five-game homestand here for the Crews. Special morning time start, 11 a.m. Crews have won three in a row, but right now, Reggie, Greensboro's look good early in this game. What do you think DJ Baker is going to make adjustments wise here? Well, he's going to want them to, when I say move faster, the way that the Swarm are moving the ball, the Crews seem a step slow. They're going to want to um, be the aggressors and not the reactors on defense. Buck Knight throwing it to Kobe Simmons into the game, missing that leaner. And Simmons, who I'm in a former McDonald's All-American, he's, he's a bucket waiting to happen. Roden going to play pitch and catch with Sykes. Roden setting up on Sneed. Johnson cutting, taking contact, missing another short shot down there. Yep, and a few haven't gone his way, but you have to stay with it. Book Knight looking good so far, seven points. Yep, he's a running back kind of guy. He's a competitor. And it, it, with, with a guy like Book Knight and his talent, I mean, it's just really about him being there. You know, because if he comes through the door mentally ready, his, his talent is a high level. Johnson, no. Sykes to clean up. Yep, there's Sykes, you want the smallest man on the court. You wonder how he gets in there, but he does. He has a knack and he has toughness. Maladon on the other end. Greensboro can't miss right now. Maladon, the former draft pick. He has game. He's smooth. You, you don't ever see him rush. His pace is always that of, um, you know, I'm in control. Johnson looking for an outlet. Buddy Beheim is that outlet. Enough juice on the behind the back pass. Simmons got the roll. And Greensboro's got their largest lead of the game. Tough layup by Simmons, able to contort his body in the air and finish that shot. This looks totally different than the other night. The Crews were the team that were the aggressors on Monday night. And that's why they say basketball is a game of runs and ups and downs because the team that lost comes out with more energy and you know you would think the crews hey we beat these guys the other day but that can relax you slightly Maladone threw it right to Sykes careless pass Roden attacking and finally one rolls in for the crews there it is Roden running the floor and that's the best way to get going getting getting going is so hard when you isolate per se isolation basketball, but just getting out, getting you a fast break layup, getting a steal, doing something easy to get you going is the best thing. Book Knight wants it right back. The pass from Sneed was too low and he couldn't catch it. Yep, and the Swarm, even though that didn't work out, you see how they, you see their intent to move the ball and make the crews work on defense. Buddy Beheim will come out for sub of the game for DJ Baker's club. Tyler Edwards is into the game, along with Big Nate Roberts down low. There's a look at Anthony Durogi, who thought he was coming in. He's about to come in. <laughs> Buddy Beheim sits down. And so a point like this, you see the Swarm are up seven, four minutes to go. So, so here are subs. You want to look and see who gives, 
who affects the game? Who came in and, you know, since you came in, hey, we started winning, we came back or not, we expanded the lead. That, I love seeing that part of basketball to see who's the difference makers. Right there, Palmer stepped out of bounds as he threw that baseline pass. So, Cruz turnover. Yep, he's out of bounds. Yep, last time I checked, the rule said you had to stay in bounds. <laughs> It's always nice, Reggie, that you're brushing up on the rule book before every broadcast, you know? <laughs> right. Just make sure we're all keeping each other accountable. Exactly. They haven't changed that one. Deroji threw the pass to Booknight, and he traveled. Yeah, the Booknight is thinking, hey, I do that all the time. They don't call that everywhere. That long black sleeve look. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. The long sleeves make book night comfortable. Yep. Cruz looking for a bounce back bucket. Sykes to Roden. A little bit short. And most of the Cruz jump shots, they seem just short. So once they get, once they wake up, you'll start to see that extra length on the shots. Here they come again. Roden wants a little help from Edwards. Former Houston Cougar with the ball. And he's maybe the best team in college basketball this year. Yeah, they're, they're dynamic. Kevin Sampson has done a wonderful job of transforming that program. So this year in college basketball, it kind of feels like there's a lot of good teams. We don't know who's a truly great team. I think most people agree at this point that Kyler Edwards, alma mater, Houston, that's a really great basketball team. Yeah, it is. It is. And, I mean, it's just interesting. College basketball is so – anyone can win. I mean, it's probably 13 teams that can get hot over that 21 days of the NCAA tournament. And win. Don't forget about Alabama. Their head coach is Nate Oates, who used to be the head coach of Romulus High School. Absolutely. Romulus' finest. <laughs> Then he went to Buffalo, built a great program there. And now Alabama, known just as much for hoops as football. Palmer. Oh, man. Swirled all the way around the rim and finally went down. Palmer. Keep calling him the grounds crew. He's always there when you need him. Look at that shot. End of the shot clock. And who's there cleaning up the mess? <laughs> Mr. Palmer. Left side three. That one bounced off the rim a bunch of times and dropped for Simmons. As Chad would say, he's been living right. <laughs> when those bounces go in like that, you've been doing something right. Yes, to quote our friend Chad Bush, that is a living right roll. <laughs> Let's see if we get a quarter biscuit on this possession. And see, so those possessions right there where one person is standing and dribbling, those aren't the best. That's not what Coach Baker typically wants. Even though Roden has the ability to score one-on-one, -on -one, it hey, let's uh, let's attack. If you're going to play one-on-one, -on -one, let's attack. If you have a chance to score, cool. If not, it draws it draws a double team. Simmons got another one, and this lead keeps getting larger for the Swarm. You can tell the Swarm have been motivated over the past day and a half here in the city. Uh, didn't really give their best performance Monday, so they're looking and they turn things around. Foul on the floor, away from the ball. That's going to send us back to a media timeout. 92 seconds to go in the first quarter. You can kind of tell early on that the Greensboro Swarm came with a little bit different effort and intensity. This is an 11-point lead all of a sudden. We're back to wrap up the first quarter after this. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shape into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy, forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. Let's go! In the NBA, what's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the cluck, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou? Come on, really? Hey, Demar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got them. This is the non-stop, never born, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip-off.
Greensboro Swarm look like a totally different basketball team this morning. They are off to an 11 point lead. Their head coach, Jordan Surenkamp, spent a couple of years as the head video coordinator for the Charlotte Hornets. Played at Wabash College down the highway in Indiana. Spent some time in the Brooklyn Nets organization as well. He's done a great job with his team early today, Reggie. They look like a totally different ball club than about 36 hours ago. He has. You could tell he was upset about that performance Monday. If you remember at that one time on the fourth quarter, he just lit into them when they didn't play the kind of defense he was looking for. And so it's worked. They've come out motivated. Ryan Terrell into the game for the Cruz. Edwards letting this one go from deep. Hit it before that shot clock ran down. And that's what Edwards does. He's one of the top shooting, top three-point shooting rookies in the G League. So there he is being who he should be. Simmons. Rebound tapped in by Higgins. Those are the ones that hurt. I mean, you got the stop and then you let a guard, the other team, basically point guard, come in and get a rebound over three of your big guys. Jones spinning, missing, and Higgins had it and lost it. And it is going to be a foul on the Cruz as Higgins may be hurt behind the play. Yep, I think when, when Nate Roberts kind of came in there to go in to score, he might have uh, gotten Higgins in the midsection. So there he picks up the loose ball. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talked about Roberts and his, his Dwight Howard look. I mean, <laughs> you know, he's a big guy. So when he gets to driving, you, it's your choice if you want to stand in there. It's a business decision. Let's just say uh, most of us can relate to the pain that Ashton Higgins is currently feeling. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's gone to the locker room. He's out of here. That takes a while to recover. That was actually a backcourt violation on the Swarm, so it goes right back to the Cruz. That's something you don't see often. I mean, just throwing it ahead in that situation. Saw the little tap on the chest. My bad. Inside, they were trying to feed Roberts. It got tipped out of bounds by Seed. And so Roberts, who's a new player, this is maybe his third or fourth game. He played well their first two games um, that we did. I look, I'm looking for him to capitalize on those plays because he's not going to really be in a situation to get the ball in the post per se. So when you screen and roll like that, like you, you have to catch the ball and finish. I mean, that would he would be a really good presence for the team or that offensive rebound there. You know, the big guys are. It's different, man. Basketball is different now. If you're a big guy, you have to kind of find a way to entrench yourself without just a normal post catch that you used to get years ago. So offensive rebounds, scoring off pick and rolls, like you, you have to complete those. There's a leaner for Crutcher. Largest lead of the game for the Swarm here. Terrell on the inbound. Jones was getting denied. Chandra gets up the floor. Contact on the three, so Edwards is going to the line. And Crutcher, he left his feet. I mean, I know he's upset with somebody, but don't leave your feet. You're not going to block it anyway, so you can contest without kind of jumping forward. And it's also a frustrating foul because there's one second, right? Absolutely. Did they not call a shooting foul here? Apparently no, they did No, they say he was on the ground. He wasn't even in a shooting motion. All right. And it looks like they got it. If, to the to the second, it looks like they got it right. But I, th I think they're still in the bonus, though, so that's why they'll shoot free throws. Right. This is a one for two for Edwards because he was not fouled while shooting the three. Remember, that's a G League rule in case you're just watching for the first time. They shoot one free throw to make two. Easy way to rack up points. Swarm won't even try something here. Off to the second quarter and a good start for the road team. Crews are trying to make it four wins in a row to close out this five game homestand. But the Swarm are being rude guests right now. After 12 minutes of basketball in the Motor City, Crews are trailing the Swarm by 10. Your drive, your grit the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all. 
And from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. Like to do it before we go out on the weekend. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today starting at just $22.99 a month. Happy Education Day from Wayne State Fieldhouse. This place is packed and filled with kids ready to cheer. But right now, Reggie Butler, Turbo is the one having to pump up these kids because Greensboro is playing really good basketball right now. Yep, absolutely. The, the Swarm have come out determined with intent to even this series out. Greensboro lost on Monday night. Simmons, good shot fake. He missed the three, though. Oh boy. Look out down there. Duro G was trying to save the rebound and couldn't do it. Yeah, that's a that's scary for the cameraman right there. Sitting right underneath that basket is a dangerous physical game. Sykes remains in. Quick trigger for Kyler Edwards, who's already scored eight. So that slip pick that Kyler Edwards does is one of the most effective things that the crews do. So he's, he's a big guard. So you brace yourself for him coming to set the pick for Sykes. But then he doesn't really set it. He just slips. And since he's one of the best shooters, it always works. That time Sneed slipping along the baseline for an easy dunk. And Sneed, who played well the other day, he started in foul trouble, but was able to stay in the game. You see him backdoor cutting. And that's the best thing to do. Sneed, he has a height advantage over Sykes, so hey, go to the rim. So right there, that was the same play. So, But they were ready for it, and it got them up. The Swarm were ready for it, but the crews got a foul out of it because they had just done it. So I, I really like that action for the crews. They might go away from it for a few minutes, as it looks like. The Swarm are ready for it, but it, it got them what they wanted. Sykes, step back long two. Not going to go in, but he did get fouled. So it's interesting as you see the adjustments part of a game. So Coach Baker in that last time out, he said, hey, we're going to do this. The Swarm adjusted after one play. And, and now, so now what's next? And through all of these adjustments, Where's the end? You know, the individual talent will soon like that right there. That's not a place. That's just Sykes able to create that. Free throw falls. Sykes has got seven now. Greensboro's led by as many as 12. Whaley looked around, took the shot, and missed it. Long rebound, Edwards. He's going to push and have it picked off by Simmons. Wow, he looked like a cornerback on that one. Now he's got it back. Kobe's looking good early. That's a great pass to Maladon. It's the three, rebound Whaley. 
right back to Maladon. Sneed the fake, inside, offensive foul. And guess who took it? Palmer, <laughs> the ground crew there. Uh, what, what task was that? That was, you know, helping the pilot in on yep. the runway. So, I mean, he's just somebody who's there whenever you need him. Sneed thought that was a block. Did he, did he think someone was pushing him? I, I don't know, because I thought Palmer was set in there for a while. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, couple of minutes into the second quarter now. Sykes for Edwards. Kyler Edwards, already 11 points. If I'm Kyler Edwards, I love playing with Sykes. I mean, Sykes is just able to get into places and draw double teams, and he kicks. He gets him a lot of open shots. You'll see most of Edwards' points come off of Sykes' passes. Blues have clawed their way back in this ball game. Whaley working on Palmer. Missed the lefty leaner. Ryan Terrell comes up the floor. Three on two. Offensive foul. Yep, so Terrell had a guy in the corner, but he chose to take it, and he thought he could tour to his body. You, you'll see he wasn't it, he wasn't straight into the guy's chest, but he thought there he was able to contort. But yeah, I don't know if that's really a charge, but to the referee's eyes, I mean, it's a guy standing there, and you jump past him, so there it is. The momentum for the Cruz is down just for the minute here. Shot clock running down. Crutcher lets it go and hits it. Crutcher, he's been determined tonight. The Dayton Flyer, has, it, this has been two good games for him so far. Guy who was roommates with Obi Toppin in college. So he got to see success firsthand, and he was a big part of that, uh, their run also. Simmons right back to Sneed. Oh, my goodness. He missed the dunk. All Sneed could do is laugh. And as I think he was a little too far under the rim for that one. Yeah, he's saying to Simmons, you got to get me that ball earlier. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yep. Look like me out there right now. Reggie, I wish I could get that high. <laughs> I wish I could do that. I wish I could miss a dunk as close as that. <laughs> All right, so break for the Cruz. Palmer gets it to Ryan Terrell. There's a rebound for Sneed, the guy who just missed the dunk. Good night, and it tips. Terrell will lead the break again. Into the corner, Sykes. Rebound, book night. And you see here in the G League, they don't wait. They get that rebound, and they are out. And if there's any opportunity for, you know, a shot or open look, they're taking it. Maladone was dancing, working on Chandra Jones, and they finally got a foul at number 21. There in Maladone, I mean, he a good idea because typically guys will pass that out, but you have a four-inch, you have a four-inch height advantage. You know, pivot around till you see daylight and then go up. Teo Maladone, the 21-year-old from Rouen, France. Guy who started 50 times for the OKC Thunder last couple of years. Got traded to Houston into September, got waived a couple of weeks later, then a few days later he signed with Charlotte. He's been in this organization ever since. He has played 36 games up with the Hornets this year. Yep, and he's, a, he's a great example of um, how you have to stick with it. Let's say you go right now to the McDonald's High School All-America game and ask them, hey, when you're 23 years old, you want to be in the G League? How many of them will say yes? Zero. Zero. But here Maladonius, he's in the G League. Incredible talent. Guys like him and the couple other hundred who are super talented like him and are just a call up away or it's, it's, it's all about how they approach their time down here. And that's so true, not just in the G League, but all forms of minor league sports, hockey, baseball. 
it's tough sometimes when you're down here and you've been up there to keep your mental focus, but honestly, that's the struggle every single day for guys like Maladone. Play hard here so you can get back up there. Absolutely. Those who those who are able to show up as the best version of themselves, like despite whether they think they should be there or not, are the ones who go up. That's an offensive foul on Whaley, so wave off the three for Maladone. And guess who guess who got fouled? Trayvon Palmer. Trayvon Palmer, the guy who's doing everything, fighting through. You see him giving up his body. I mean, guys like that are very important. He, he's not a normal starter. You know, he's usually the seventh man, maybe eighth man, but he's being asked to start under these terms, and, and it's working out. Jalen Johnson back in. And off Edwards. Tried to find Terrell. Nearly got intercepted by Book Knight. He's going crashing into that scorer's table. Plays like that are when you know Book Knight's involved. We didn't see that the other day. We didn't see him, you know, trying to run a loose ball um, out of bounds. Of course, we saw flashes of offensive talent, but we didn't see things like that. So you know he's invested today. Sykes, good. Got around Higgins and hit him. Great job from finding his mid-range spot. Higgins on the other end. Found Sims, who missed, but the follow is good. Sims doing a good job of padding the stats there. <laughs> Missing the easy one to get it back. Not sure if he was trying to pad the stats, no, he but wasn't. that's how it worked out. <laughs> he wasn't. <laughs> Lob, Edwards had it intercepted by Book Knight. And on both ends. To go, and get the roll. I thought he got fouled on that jump shot. <laughs> it was close. Terrell will try it again. Hagen's the rebound again. Some of these open looks, Terrell wishes he would have these back because he usually knocks those down. Yeah, on the other end, he just picked up a foul on Book. <laughs> he turned around and started clapping in his face. Hey, look, Ryan Terrell hasn't scored yet today, but he's going to bring you the defense. And yes, he's going to bring you the Teal Yamaka. Absolutely. We love it. Time out on the floor, 6.13 to go. First half, just about halfway into the second quarter. Greensboro's led by as many as 12 points in this game. The lead is seven as we're starting to turn toward home in the first half. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. We're back here at Wayne State Fieldhouse. They're reviewing something, Reggie. Maybe they're reviewing what happened right before the break when Ryan Terrell crashed into James Book Night. They could A, be reviewing that foul. B, God love them, they may be reviewing a technical foul on Ryan Terrell because he turned around and started clapping in Book Knight's face. Yeah, so, and, and I don't know if they could review the kind of the tone afterwards, but they, there was something about that collision that they want to want to check out. We'll get our official ruling here. That's Rachel Rayford going over to talk to DJ Baker. Here's another look at what happened right before the break. Ooh. Oh, yep. Uh, so Book Knight just basically ran into. Oh, they ejected him. Wow. 
That is a flagrant two. Yeah, and they kicked him out. Yep, so they're saying that, so they're saying that, um, you know, because uh, Terrell had his back turned, it was defenseless. It wasn't, I think, I would think that they're, flagrant two, as far as I know, is if it's a non-basketball play. Flagrant one, for example, if you're going for the ball, but really just whack the guy, because you, you missed the ball, and you might whack him hard. Flagrant one, but as far as flagrant two is, hey, if it's not a basketball play at all, a, 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 a player is defenseless, we want to eliminate that. That's what I think that they're saying by calling a flagrant two. Because think about it, if you leave a guy like that in the game, I mean, players want revenge. Right. And now you've got somebody getting revenge, and yeah, so. Well, for, for as many people who long for the days of the late 80s and the bad boys Pistons, that's not how they want the game to be played anymore. Yeah, exactly. Those Some of those guys were my mentors, man. Big big Rick Mahorn and those guys. But it's, it's just a different game now. And, and you know, with Book Knight, his tremendous talent, I mean, you just wonder, you know, what's a what's a play like that going to do? I hope he continues to stay focused throughout the rest of the season. Could be a turning point for the Crews. Buddy Beheim. There is his first basket of the day. There you go, Beheim. I like him when he's, of course he's a shooter, but I like him when he's getting under the three-point line and creating things as well. Hagen's on the other end. Got the roll on Palmer. Hagen, who's continuing his good play. Glad to see him recover from that bump earlier in the game. Yeah, remember, he got hit in a place that no man wants to get hit. Great to see him back in. <laughs> At all. Andre Jones, bounce Johnson. What does he do? He finds Jared Roden. He's got to let it go. So John Whalen. That play there, so Jalen Johnson, who's really good in the pick and roll, but one thing you don't see him do is shoot many floaters. That, you know, but a lot of big guys have uh, floaters and things like that. If he added that to his game, I mean, he's a super complete player because that's what you do kind of outside the charge line but under the free throw line. Now, if he's at the rim, of course he could dunk. He could lay it up. If he's at the free throw line, of course he could shoot a jump shot. Answer on the other end for Jones after Hagen had the last basket for free throw. Jones, who you never really see play bad. He's the ultimate pro. Sims, no, but foul on his way to the basket. Nice move by Sims to go one way and put it through his legs, change the direction while the defender's still moving. So you'll see Sims be able to change directions there. I mean, that's hard to guard. Chandre Jones for the foul. That's his third. He wasn't around the ball, though. And the Cruz, they don't have a deep bench. You know, they, they, with guys injured, Kaycock leaving for overseas. Uh, the Cruz have to watch the fouls. Echenique as well in the last few games. Johnson tried to follow up with a jam, didn't get it with his right hand. Higgins, Whaley, that is easy. What a play by Higgins, being able to thread that needle there for that assist. Timeout, DJ Baker. Greensboro has done an excellent job, not just building the lead, Reggie, but we've seen. Crews are trying to get close. Swarm are not having it. They still got a nine-point lead here, coming down the wire in the first half. Yep, What's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the claw, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou. Come on, really? Hey, Demar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got them. This is the non-stop, never born, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip-off.
Greensboro's led by as many as 12 points in this game. Right now they got a nine point lead. Honestly, Reggie, this game feels like Monday night, but in reverse. This is the, the type of way that the Crews closed out the game on Monday night, got a double digit lead and held on the rest of the way. Feels similar today, right? The Swarm got a lead and every time the Crews get close, they just got a little run back. Yep, absolutely. It, it just seems that the Crews are a step behind the Swarm defensively, the way the Swarm are moving the ball. The ball and times like this, it usually takes a purse, somebody to wake up and be a little more. Uh, and the coach just got ejected. Yeah, they just kicked out Jordan Surencamp. So James Booknight has been kicked out, and Jordan Surencamp has been kicked out. He was frustrated about something. Yep, and uh, there was something with that play there that I think they wanted to, as you see Hagen, who, who's that, Hagen, who doesn't have his shoe in there. Something happened during that play where coach wanted that call. Who says there's not intrigue in a game that starts at 11 in the morning? <laughs> Absolutely, and what the Swarm are saying is, why didn't I get one tech? Like, usually you, you give a guy one tech, not two techs on the same thing. If he keeps it up, you get the second tech, but the, you know, what was it that, he deserved two techs at once. Now we're gonna have to get another look. Buddy Bayheim will shoot free throws here. Watch the top of your screen. So Edwards gets inside, so he's scores. He got elbowed. Okay. Okay. So so he so he came on the court. You know the complain about the elbow, elbow, and you give him a tech. I don't. I I, I don't think you give a tech. most referees. After they give the tech, they turn around. You, you know, if you pursue them from that, all right, cool. You're barking up the second one, but like, you get your money's. You're supposed to get your money's worth for the first tech. So, well, it's kind of like in baseball, right? When a manager gets ejected, they they really go and th they let them get their money's worth. Like you're saying, yeah. there, it felt like one technical, maybe not two. But again, we're not making the calls now. Yeah, absolutely. And so now you have a legend, Daniel Marshall, who takes over the UConn legend and former NBA player who will um, pull a guy to swarm now. Buddy Bayheim trying to get there down to the deck, but couldn't save it. Buddy's alma mater, Syracuse, picked up a big win at home yesterday against a ranked NC State team. Right here, Buddy's doing his best to save that ball. <laughs> you see the little girl put her leg up. She's like, I don't want any part of that. <laughs> Stay over there with it, buddy. That is a large man coming <laughs> right from my grill, and I'm not really interested. <laughs> Malado the bounce, and Whaley missed. Roberts fouled him. That's why he missed. Their interior passing has been really good. They found the, group, the swarm, excuse me, have found each other for some backdoor layups, and it's been paying off. Whaley, as soon as he missed, looked around and went, come on, where's the foul? And yeah. he found the foul, and he was happy again. <laughs> right. That's a, a depleted coaching bench now for the Greensboro Swarm with Surin Camp ejected. But as you said, Reggie, uh, if you're going to have a quote-unquote backup plan, you may as well go to Danielle Marshall. That's a decent backup plan. Yeah, absolutely. He knows so much about the game. Here's Edwards. Took a while deciding if he was going to shoot. Got his miss. Back up. Hand of the line. That was good patience by Edwards. I mean, he waited till he had the shot he was looking for, even after he got the rebound. Still pump faked and waited. It's the second on Maladone. Sneed, Maladone, Book Knight. Well, he's been ejected now. Maladone and Sneed, a couple of personals apiece for Greensboro. In case you're just joining us, yes, the Swarm lead this game, and they've pretty much led it from the start. But their coach, Jordan Surencamp, and one of their best scorers, James Booknight, have both been ejected. So it's going to get interesting down the stretch here. So I have a question. <laughs> you got now, usually it's one person who's in the locker room. With Coach Ed Booknight in the locker room, what are they in there talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're watching the game. Maybe they're watching us. <laughs> right. So hi, guys. <laughs> This is Sneed, missing a corner three. Tyler Edwards has got the ball. He's been your man today for the Crews, 15 points. Entry feed, Johnson. And he dribbled it off of a swarm player down there. 
Greensboro's looking around going, I think Jalen dribbled it off of his <laughs> foot. <laughs> right. And you were going to, going to the old school fundamentals. Don't put it down on the floor, big fella. Just go on up. So you'll see there in traffic. I mean, you're already there. foot within the charge zone. Turn around, pivot, go up. Right off the inbound, Jared Roden. Good. And he's the one. I think Roden is the guy who has to pick it up. You're the two-way guy, um, and, you, and you have the ability. Three-point game. All the school kids are back into it now. One more pass to Crutcher, and he got it. That is great ball movement. I mean, that is textbook ball movement by the Swarm. Coming up on two minutes to go in the half. This is what Greensboro has done today. The Crews get close, they've just got that answer. It's frustrating if you're a Crews fan. Yep. Roden cutting and scoring again. Yep, he's the one. It's time for Roden to step up. He can give him six. He scored 74 combined points in the last three games. Hagen spinning and hitting off glass. There's a big pump of the fist. Yeah, that was kind of unique. He, after he spun, he just kind of just stood up. He didn't even jump, and I think it caught Jalen Johnson by surprise. Edwards. Roberts back tap. Beheim. Yes. That's it. That's what you're looking for from Roberts. I mean, he's been out there for a bunch of minutes, and this is the first time that they played Jalen Johnson and Roberts together. So the crews are thinking, hey, we got our bigger lineup. Let's take advantage of it. And an out for Hagen. Crews can tie the game with a three here. Buddy Beheim wants the ball. Not going to get it here, a foul away from the ball. A bench warning on the crews. That's why DJ Baker looks so confused. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm see not anything sure. out of the order? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they said the magic word. Oh. Roden on the go. How did that shot go? <laughs> Determination. <laughs> But, yeah, Roden, who has six in a row, we mentioned how he has to step up, and here he is. I mean, he's their two-way guy. I mean, psychologically, that means something. When you get in a tough spot, the, you know, the player who's in that position, look for him to hurt. Crutcher has to Sneed. Around the rim they go again. Hagens. Oh, man. Desperation. Step back, and he's fired up. Yeah, he has hit some big shots over the last two days. Oh, two games, excuse me. Former Kentucky Wildcat with 11 and playing animated basketball. Yeah, Allen Johnson. The score. Yeah, inside to Roberts. Off the deck. No good. Rode it to Edwards. And they didn't get it off in time because there was no reset of the shot clock. Yep. And on that play, Jalen Johnson, who has all the talent in the world. I mean, we saw him have a monster game. You got an isolation. You're at the elbow. Go to work. There's, there's nobody else to pass to. Everybody else is just as covered as you are. So go to work. All right. Let's see what the Swarm can draw up. About 11 seconds to go in the first half. We're going to go to the scores table here quickly to confirm that they got the right time up there. I'm the Swarm. I'm looking for Hagen. He, he's been, the way he's played and some of the shots he's made, he's scored inside and outside. I'm looking for him. Here's Danielle Marshall. You know, he may not be in quote-unquote playing weight anymore, but you can certainly tell that the man on the left side of your screen once upon a time was playing in the NBA. Yeah, I mean, he he was silky smooth. You remember that high jump shot he used to have at the University of UConn? He used to terrorize the Big East, and he was a good NBA player as well. Cleveland Cavaliers uh, catching some of those LeBron James passes and knocking down shots. And Oh, yeah, he was he was a guy who, um, who I used to idolize, <laughs> actually. One last possession for Greensboro, and what's been a good first half. Simmons wants ISO ball. Kobe, Simmons, kaboom! 
Tough shot by Simmons right before the half. Greensboro lost by 15 points on Monday night. On Education Day, on Wednesday morning, it's been a totally different story. The Greensboro Swarm have had beautiful basketball. Ball movement galore, three-pointers galore. The crew scored 53 points in the first half, but they're still down by seven. They're going to have work to do when we start the second half in about 15 minutes. Halftime coming up from Wayne State Fieldhouse. say that this is a game of inches, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time right before our very eyes. If every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick and it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone Get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or a hundred yards. We want it more, and we're gonna take it. That's game. Let's go! In the NBA, what's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the claw, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou. Come on, really? Hey, Demar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got him. This is the non-stop, never boring, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip-off. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy. Forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. So on Education Day here at Wayne State Fieldhouse, the big crowd of school kids in attendance they haven't had as many chances to cheer as they'd like because the crews are down by seven. The Pistons Extreme Team is currently, uh, currently doing dunks, so this is the loudest the place has been all day. And with good reason. I mean, how can you not like these dunks? They're fantastic. Oh, they just missed one. Evan Stockton, Reggie Butler, glad you're making time for us. Right around uh, lunchtime now, almost noon on a Wednesday afternoon. Reggie, as we look at the highlights from the first half, we talked about this throughout those first couple of quarters. This game feels like the reverse of Monday. Cruz got out to an early lead on Monday, hung on to win. Right now, the Swarm have been the ones playing balance, good team basketball. Absolutely. Sometimes you wonder, are these the same players? Like, are these literally the same team? But yes, they are. And one has a lot more motivation, it looks like. And that's the Swarm. Yeah, the Swarm have come out today and looked really solid. So here's James Booknight hitting a shot for the Swarm. That is the subplot to this game. He actually got kicked out, a flagrant two foul on Ryan Terrell in the second quarter. And then later on in the quarter, the Swarm's head coach, Jordan Surenkamp, got ejected. How do you think that's going to affect the second half of that? Well, if they might look at it as a us against the world type thing. Whether, you know, whether the ejections were warranted or not, that doesn't matter. They, they're going to use them how they want to use them. So you might find the Swarm will come out a little bit more motivated than they were in the first half. So in, in terms of the scoring for the Swarm, Jalen Crutcher, Ashton Hagens, Kobe Simmons, all in double figures. For the Crews, the man who's been awesome today, that guy, Kyler Edwards, 15 points. He is leading all scores. 
There's no other Cruz player, Reggie, in the double figures yet. You keep calling for Jared Roden to make a few more buckets for the Cruz here today. Yeah, absolutely. I, because, you know, Roden, he has the ability. He has the size. He has the shot, um, the energy. I, I just think that he's going to try to come out and have a really big second half. The crowd here is loving it. How can you not love Education Day? You get a little coffee in your system, and then the rest of the noise will wake you up. We're right. counting down to the second half. Greensboro leading Motor City by seven, and we'll get you more stats from the first half when you come on back to Wayne State Fieldhouse in Detroit. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running, and that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. We like to do it before we go out on the weekend. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey, kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today, starting at just $22.99 a month. We begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. Let's go! In the NBA, what's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the cloth, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou? Come on, really? Hey, Damar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got them. This is the nonstop, never born, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip off. Finishing off all the dunks. All right, let's see one more from the extreme team. One bounce, two bounce, three bounce, four bounce, one more bounce, why not? Oh my God, that is incredible. If I tried that, I they'd, they'd have to carry me out of this bill house. <laughs> Seven point lead for Greensboro, Reggie. How would you do if you tried that? Not ideal? Uh, well, you know what? It might not work because it might go through the floor. The, like it might not give, it might not go how it was intended to go. <laughs> that first half for Greensboro, what they were expecting, you know, the Crews actually got out to a quick little early lead, and then things totally flipped on their head. Greensboro with a seven-point lead as we approach the start of the second half. They led by as many as 12 in the first half. What's standing out to you on those stats, right? The field goal percentage. The Swarm, they're shooting the lights out. 60% from two, 44% from three, and that's because of their passing. They've made the extra pass to find the open man. And as well, look at the rebounding. Greensboro with 20 rebounds, the Cruz with 17. That's where the Swarm got killed the other night, Monday. 
Cruz out rebounded him by 13, 48 to 35. DJ Baker loved the effort rebounding. Told us before the game it was really more effort than anything. Why do you think the Swarm were out rebounding the Cruz so far? Because they're motivated. The, I mean, come on, the Cruz are pros. They they want to win, but the Swarm have a little bit more extra motivation. Losing, being here, having to hear from coach, you know, the last two days. So uh, it. With rebounding being an effort thing, it's really to the more motivated team. We'll see who comes out guns a-blazing in the second half. A couple of more quarters to go on Education Day. We were talking about the scoring a little bit throughout the first half highlights. Hagen, Simmons, Crutcher all in double figures. Whaley's just about there. Again, Reggie, the guy that you're calling for. Edwards has played really well today, but if the Crews are going to come back and win, it feels like Jared Roden needs about 15, 20 more points here today. Yeah, I would think Roden. Also Sykes. So Sykes hasn't been, per se, his normal stats stuffing self. So uh, it's, it's a few guys who have to step up. As you see, the Swarm have had a few guys. But now the benches seem to get a little shorter. Few of the crews have foul trouble. Uh, the Swarm are now without book night. So we'll see how this half goes. Second half coming up in just a few minutes. Crews are trying to make it four wins in a row and eight in their last 12. We're about to hit the road for a couple of games at Delaware next week. Everyone in attendance on Education Day wants to see the crews come back and win. Will they come back? We'll find out together. Second half is starting in just about three and a half minutes. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. We all know that our wives and daughters deserve special attention, but that's especially true when it comes to their knees. Do you know that females are at a two to five times risk compared to their male counterparts when it comes to blowing out their knees? It doesn't seem fair, but it's true. The reasons include the way females are made and the way they fire their muscles. But fortunately, there are injury prevention programs out there that can greatly decrease this risk of injury. And if you do know a female who blows out her ACL, don't despair. We have neat, innovative, minimally invasive ways to fix their knees and get them back onto the field. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. We begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. Let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself, shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy, forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. This copyrighted broadcast of the NBA G League may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA G League. About to start the second half from Wayne State Fieldhouse. A lot of good basketball has been played here recently. Crews have won three in a row. They beat Oklahoma City Friday and Saturday, beat Greensboro on Monday, trying to beat them again today. 
don't forget that there will be more basketball in this venue this weekend. The PSL Championships are going to be here, Reggie, on Sunday. It's going to be a great environment. Yeah, absolutely. It's the first time they've had them here. They were out at Oakland, uh, Oakland, Michigan last year. And so I'm excited to have them return to the city. And it's going to be a great crowd. If you haven't been following high school hoops in Metro Detroit this year, a team from the PSL may be the best team in the state. Cast Tech is an awesome team this year. Oh, my goodness. They are so deep. <laughs> they are so deep. And then Cheeks. Yeah. I mean, let, I can't talk about that kid enough. I mean, grew up playing with his uncles and some of his older family members. And, I mean, he's just a stud. We'll see if Cast Tech finds its way to the Breslin Center in about four or five weeks when the high school state championships happen. We turn back to the professional ranks now, and Maladone just started the second half strong for Greensboro. Yep, and Maladone, who's, who was our highlight player before the game, he's a pro, able to just kind of do what he pleases when he wants to. Buddy Beheim left alone. That's usually not a good decision. No, it's not. He's a shooter. you got to get out there on him. He can give Buddy 10. A couple of made threes now. Sneed, quick trigger. Rebound right to Whaley. Reload for the Swarm. So part of a comeback is rebounding because you don't want to give a team a second chance just like that. You want to be able to, when they do miss, you want to be able to get the rebound and get off to the races. Yeah, and that was the key for the Crews the other night. The big reason why they won on Monday is they have rebounded the Swarm by 13. Beheim again! It is Beheim heating up. So again, if you're the crews, let while you have Beheim who's shooting hot like this, get the rebound. There you go. You get the rebound so you can get him more possessions. And they gave it right to Buddy. Yep. Oh my goodness! That was a little too deep. Heat check. <laughs> I mean, he, like I said, while he's hitting, you get the most out of him you can. <laughs> Simmons floater is good. But it hurts when the other team comes, other team comes down and and uh, takes advantage of that. That three that Buddy just took, there's one man who's comfortable from that range. His name's Steph Curry. He's the greatest shooter who's ever lived. Uh, he's changed the game. <laughs> Rode it in and out. Foul on the floor. I mean, you're, you're talking kind of 10 years ago, shots like that were frowned upon. Now it's like, hey, if you can't do that, we don't call you an elite shooter. You could be a good shooter, but if you can't shoot it from out there, now you're not elite. Steph Curry. Jalen Johnson, nice finish. Good you, job. you see a lot of youth basketball. I like the point you're bringing up about now you got to shoot threes from where Buddy just tried from the logo. Yep. Do you like that evolution of basketball that way? Uh, well, you know, I mean, you know how I feel about my big guys. <laughs> I, I don't completely. There's some things that are good, good about it. It opens up the tool set. It opens up the bag. It, Creativity is great, but here's, here's the kicker. Everybody can't do it, yeah. but everybody tries. So that makes it worse in that context. You've got guys who can't do it. Steph Curry makes four out of ten of those. The average player makes one and a half out of ten of those deep ones. So it, it, it's not better because it's not the same percentages. There will never be another Steph and Clay. Right. That is the greatest shooting combo, I think, in the history of the game by this point. Right? It is. It is. Let's, let's stop with the era stuff and holding on the heritage and all of that. No, they are the best shooting backcourt ever. Buddy Beheim lights out. There it is. Like, while Buddy Beheim is hitting, let's take advantage of it. Foul on Trayvon Palmer. Buddy Beheim has hit three threes already in the third quarter. We're not even three minutes into the second half. Buddy's got nine already and 16 in the game. Yep. Everything we're doing is going is going to Buddy. You know, I'm running them off screens. You can take one in transition. I mean, you know, times like this don't happen often. So you, you want to kind of milk the cow while you have it. Maladone for Sneed. Xavier Sneed fouled by Johnson, who thought he had his arms up. Yep, technical. These officials have not been afraid to call technicals today. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been that one. It's been um, the same official. Like, you have to adjust and realize he's not going to let you talk to him. I mean, so Jalen, who 
has some extra emotion as far as putting his hands up a few times and to show him that he didn't, um, you know, his hands were up. But that official has showed you, like, I'm not going, I don't want to hear it tonight. So you got to adjust. Go talk to the other <laughs> official. Like, usually it's funny how a crew balances themselves out. You got somebody who will listen to you, somebody who won't. You, go talk to the other one. Because this, because if you look at it now, this slows the run down, and once it slows the run down and the momentum, it's hard to get it back. And he's not going to change his call. And Jalen's still talking. By the way. <laughs> you got to let it go. Poor Matt Callio, the the official down there, has had to listen to Jalen Johnson look talk his ear off. He's like, "I'm going go the other place. Yeah. Go the other way." <laughs> yep. Well, now they call the delay again. I mean, if you're getting paid per minute, you are loving how the last couple of minutes have gone. <laughs> we have to play basketball again at some point, I promise you. Exactly. I mean, this is, this is uh, yeah, this is, this is a tough one. I mean, when, when you have stoppages for those reasons. The scoreboard was encouraging noise. That's why all the school kids did. just got louder. Jayheim has nine already in this third quarter. Jones will feed it to him. Why not let it go? Good job by Crutcher of getting his feet outside the three-point line, guarding Beheim on that one. Five-point lead for the Swarm after the Crews got really close. It's been the theme of the game. Now it goes spinning and drawing a foul. And Maladone, who's pulled the time under pressure, shot, end of shot clock, you know, crowd cheering, like that doesn't speed him up. He's just always under control. And you see the only reason he fell down was because he was fouled. And that's the second foul on Palmer. Maladone sitting on 10 points as he goes to the free throw line. So this is an interesting time for the crews. I mean, while you have Beheim who's shooting well and you've gotten back into this game, you can't let fouls and other things kind of get you out of your rhythm. Another made bucket for Beheim. Yep, and he gives a, yeah, and Beheim, he's like, I want a foul too. You guys were just down at the other end for a few minutes. You know, where's our foul? It's an 11 point third quarter for Buddy. Will they get the ball back to him? A three does tie the game. Johnson faked it to Bayheim, found space, and finger rolled it home, plus one. That's what you can do. So with Jalen Johnson, if you feel some kind of way about the referees, you know what? Go back and do it with your play. And he was able to fake that pass because of how well Bayheim has done, right? All the, the emphasis on him leads to an and one in that Jalen Johnson shimmy we love. Yep, great catch. You're right. As Bayheim has been hot, all the defense is going to shift to him. Don't look now. We got a tie ball game. Yes, I borrowed that line from another broadcaster. Thank you, George. <laughs> Maladone, three. No. Cruz can take the lead. See them trying to run Buddy off some screens there. Buddy, look at him get inside and kick. Jalen Johnson. Long rebound to Roden. Sykes. Yeah. Yep, they, they got the lead. And good job by Buddy, who got under the three-point line and started that off with the pass out. Timeout at Wayne State Fieldhouse. The crews were down by seven at the break. They're not down by seven anymore. That is beautiful basketball. And it is all crews early in the second half. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. 
Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray, and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. All right, we're back in Wayne State Fieldhouse where the crews have rolled out of the break. They were down by seven at halftime. They're outscoring the Swarm by 10 here, early parts of the third quarter. And the officials, Reggie, who have made a, a beeline to the monitor a lot today, have gone right back to the monitor to look at another play. Yeah, I wonder what it is that they're reviewing this time, but it's something that they, that they see that they want to take a look at. Maybe they're reviewing a three they called. Could be a foot on the line, something like that. We have, we've not heard officially what they're looking at. Yeah, it could be. I don't think that there are any contact plays that they're looking at. Well, there's the contact right there. You got the, yeah. <laughs> got the kids flexing their muscles. <laughs> that, now, was that a dance move or was that just like a lean into the flex? What was that? A little bit of both, it looks like. Okay. <laughs> They're checking an earlier three-pointer from Bayheim if it was a two. Either way, Buddy has been magnificent so far in the second half. Right now he's sitting on 18 points in the game and 11 in the third quarter. They did change one of them to a two. So now Buddy has 10 points in the quarter, 17 for the game. Yep. Still, that's pretty good. Absolutely. It's still the same effect that he's had. And um, the crews. They're going to look to use that to their advantage. As you called out, the way Buddy ran off that screen, the whole team went to him. Jalen Johnson was able to get the fake. Um, hey, if they don't do that, maybe Buddy gets a three. But it's all based off the fact that he did start making those shots. So after that point taken off the board, Swarm can tie it with any kind of bucket here, two or three. Simmons working on Bayhawk. And we got a three-second call. It's on Jalen Johnson, who thought his foot wasn't in the lane. Defensive three seconds. And so he better he better watch it continue in the show. <laughs> so what he's doing, I mean, yeah, this referee has shown he will tech you and he will throw you out. Yeah, he already threw uh, one technical Jalen's way, who, when a call goes against him, is not afraid to share his opinion. Sneed missed the free throw. Nope, not at all. You saw those dance moves that Jalen was doing, right? <laughs> yeah. All right, I just wanted to make the, sure. The two-step, the Louisville two-step. Or the Ypsilanti two-step. Either one. <laughs> Here's a floater and we're tied. Crutcher got it. Crutcher, such a good player. I mean, just an offensive threat. They're still running Buddy off the screens. Here's Jared Roden. In and into Crutcher. Spinning. Taking a tough shot, missing it short. It's out of bounds off Pullman. Yep. Roden, who hasn't really been able to get himself going one-on-one -on -one wise. I mean, he's gotten some cuts and some rebounds, some layups, but kind of one-on-one -on -one wise, he hasn't been able to find his groove and rhythm yet. But it's never too late. Here comes the kids. There's a defense champ. Hagan's probing, passing to Crutcher, and the Swarm have got the lead back. Crutcher, he's showing again, he just hit a floater. Now he hits a catch and shoot shot. Yeah, he's one of the better guards in the G League. Like you say, that's a lot of tools in your bag, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Foul on Simmons. Yeah, 
called it on Crutcher, Crutcher away yeah. from the ball, yeah. Fighting Roden. Um, so Roden was going to the post there, and you see Crutcher holding him. So that's that's one of the advantages as well of going to the post. You start to pick up more fouls. Before you know it, you're in the bonus. Jones, long two. Good. Good job of Jones coming in and giving a lift. We haven't seen Sykes. Uh, we haven't seen much of Sykes in a while. It's been a while. Jones has been the bell cow. Higgins, no! Follow, yes, Whaley. Yep, and good follow by Whaley, realizing that the penetrator had drawn the defense, and so cleaning that up. Sykes is on the bench, but he's got his warm up on. Steele, Simmons, no. Whaley, no. Higgins, threw it right to Jones. Numbers for the Cruz. Roden, two. Yep. So Roden, Roden goes and says, you're too small. And there it is, another tech. That is the fourth technical they have called between the two teams today. I mean, they're just not taking it from guys today. No, they're just not. And so he teched both guys up. I mean, starting with Roden, and then I think he got Crutcher. And you've got to adjust. Like, he's just, he's, he, he's just not having it. It's been the same referee. And so he's just not having it. You gotta adjust. You can't, you know, no talking, just clean everything up around him. All right, so DJ Breaker is gonna bring the whole team around. We'll take a break and come on back. Good basketball game brewing here. Swarm lead by just one. Roden got the bucket and then he was talking about it. Yep. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. We like to do it before we go out on the weekend. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey, kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today, starting at just $22.99 a month. They're playing swag surfing. So, you know, everyone's got to get up and move around. <laughs> that, that's a constitutional law, I think, by this point. Yep, absolutely. So right before the break, Reggie, with this big crowd on Education Day, we've seen both teams play with a lot more intensity than you'd usually get with an 11 a.m. game on a Wednesday, right? We had matching technicals on Greensboro and the Cruz right before the break. It's a fun environment to be in, save for the fact that it feels like we're getting a technical every two minutes. Yep, absolutely. And I mean, um, it's kids' day. There's a lot of emotion in the building, a lot of cheering, but the refs are like, hey, no, 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 none of that. Cruz can take the lead back. They have not led in the second half. Tyler Edwards, he'll put it up. Just the shot. Out of bounds off Johnson. And that's a shot Kyler usually hits. And, but sometimes you got to get a rep in. You know, he's, it's been a while since he shot. You got to get a rep in to get the rust off. Higgins to Sims. Falling back. Missing the jumper, rebound Palmer, wants to go here. Jones right back to Jalen. Ryan Terrell, the shot fake. He sure thought about it. Yep. I think because he's right off the bench, he said, hey, I'm, I'm not going to pull this one. Buddy Beheim sitting on the bench. He's been the best player for the Cruz in this third quarter, 10 points. He does have a towel on his right leg on that bench. Sitting next to Sykes, who we haven't seen for a while. Deep three good for Simmons. 
Simmons who hit that three before the end of the half. I mean, he, he's shown he has range. 17 for Simmons. Johnson for Jones. Trotting up to set a screen. This is Chandre Jones. No good. Terrell missed it on the follow. Swarm coming off the floor, and it's Simmons again. Well, Simmons shooting a three, hitting a three, then getting a layup, showing his offensive repertoire. He's your leading scorer in the game. 19 points for the 6'5", 25-year-old former Arizona Wildcat. Four on the ticker. Jones, floater, answer for the crew. Good job of Jones getting in the paint and shooting that high arc of floater. Whaley sets the screen. Simmons down low. Sims, no. Johnson, tough rebound. Yep, and this opportunity, so you're down four here. What are the next things you can do over this 2.30? Can you kind of get the lead before the end of the quarter? There's that athleticism for Jalen Johnson. Not many 6'9 dudes can spin and score like that. No, not at all. So that's what he can do in the pick and roll. We talked about he can get to the rim on those rolls, and or he can shoot that jump shot. Crutcher couldn't hit the floater. Oh, man, tough break for the Cruz. Edwards couldn't save it along that end line. And they give it right back to Greensboro. Yep, if you're the Cruz, that's frustrating because you did what you were supposed to do. Got the rebound and wanted to run out, but it went out of bounds. Just about two minutes to go in the third quarter. Cruz won by 15 on Monday night. This is a tight ball game on Wednesday morning into the afternoon. Swarm up by just the deuce. Hi folks, Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Everywhere you look this time of year, people are running. And that's a great thing because running is an excellent exercise, especially for your cardiovascular and musculoskeletal systems. But the question is, are you running a safe running program? All too often, people are hobbled by things like shin splints and patellar tendonitis. But luckily, simple things like stretching and warm up, the right running shoes, and realistic weekly mileages can keep you in your running game. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. We like to do it before we go out on the weekend. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey, kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club, only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today, starting at just $22.99 a month. Crews have gotten themselves back in this ballgame. They were down by seven at halftime. Now it's down to two points. They haven't led yet, Reggie, in the third quarter, but they've gotten really close. What have you made out of the way they've played so far in this third quarter? Well, Bayheim's Bayheim's run, you know, got them into things. But more recently, they're trying to find what's, what's going to be their way going forward. Jones has hit a couple shots. You're still kind of waiting for Roden to do something. Now that Jalen Johnson's out of the team, they're out of the game. They're really small right now. Uh, let's see if they'll run and pick up the pace. Turn in the corner, bouncing to Sims. Keeps fighting down there and scores. Yep, Sims, a strong player, was able to hold on to that ball and lay it up. Four points now. Six points now for Sims. He's a rookie out of UNC Wilmington, but he's a 24-year-old rookie. Jones. Yes. Yep, Jones, who's been stepping up all night, really all season for the Cruz. Dome for Higgins. Higgins, oh my goodness. I don't know if he kept that pivot foot. They're still playing down there. And shot no good. Ryan Terrell thought there was a travel somewhere in there. Yep. 
And Hagens, he never stops moving. So even when you think you got him kind of contained and bottled up, there he is pivoting away, up and under, and throwing some pass that magically gets through there, like that pass. How did that get through there? Just the fact that he's a taller man. <laughs> Just the fact that there's a taller person as the recipient. Chandre tried his best. Ball don't lie, though. Free throw is no good. All right, let's see what the crews can do. Tie with a two, take the lead with a three here. Coming up on a minute to go, third quarter. Quick trigger, Edwards. Oh, he hit it! Crews lead, and off to the line, Kyler Edwards. Good job of Edwards being able to knock down that shot with the contact. You see there, Jones creating. Yep, there it is. Balanced attack for the Crews today. Edwards leading all scores with 18. That's a tough shot to hit through contact. Missed the free throw. And he got his missed and couldn't put it back up. Uh, yeah, I think he I thought I think he thought he was open and they took it back, but so he went and took it back himself. Ahead to Ryan Terrell. Ryan moving. Found Edwards all the way out to Jones. First lead of the second half for the Crews. Swarm have led by as many as 12 today. Jones, oh, he's heating up. Wow, Jones who showed up big in the second half as well. Coming off that screen, knocking down that three. 18 for Chandre. Sykes out, Chandre in, and no problems for the Crews. who you want with the ball. I mean, he's hit some half, some buzzer beaters thus far in this game, and he does another big shot right there. Kobe Simmons, 21 points. Big bounce back bucket for the Swarm. Still a couple of ticks to go here for the Crews. He'll get it to Edwards. He'll let it go. And he'll hit it! Wow, Edwards with the buzzer beater. And continuing his hot shooting. Yeah, count that. 21 points for the former Houston Cougar, giving the crowd on Education Day a chance to let those voices be heard. What a quarter for the Crews. They outscore the Swarm by 12, and they got a lead as we're off to the fourth. Hi, folks. Dr. Joe here again with Michigan Orthopedic Surgeons. Did you know that kids are not little adults when it comes to sports injuries? That's because of something called the growth plate. Growth plates exist all over the human body in our growing athletes. They're actually little cartilage discs that exist at the end of all the long bones. It's simply where a kid grows. The problem is that the growth plate can be the weak link. What might be a sprain, a strain, or a tear in an adult when they hurt themselves can actually be a growth plate fracture in a kid. So it's important if your kid has hurt themselves and they're not using their arm or they're not able to put weight on a leg, come see one of us, get an x-ray and make sure it's not a growth plate fracture. For more information, go to miorthosurgeons.com. Like to do it before we go out on the weekend. We do. We do it every week. Whether we need to or not. We did it today. It was really dirty. My parents do it every day. Hey kiddo. Do it every day with the Unlimited Club only at Jack's Car Wash. Protect your car from the hot summer sun, dust, dirt, and contaminants all summer long with the Jack's Unlimited Club. Join today starting at just $22.99 a month. 
how about this to end a heck of a third quarter for the Crews? Kyler Edwards got it off, knocked it down. Yes, he did, and he's been hot all game and showing the range. He's one of the top shooting rookies in the G League. And you see why right there. 21 points, had 15 on Monday night, hit half of his threes, 4-8 shooting. You remember all those threes he hit in the fourth quarter the other night to help close the thing out. Similar story today for the Crews this afternoon. Up by five after being down by seven at halftime. Time to close her out here. Absolutely, and if you think about between Edwards and Bayheim, the hot shooting they've had has been the difference. This isn't a game that it feels like the Crews have played better, but in the last few minutes, they've played the right way. Ryan Terrell spinning, shooting, Johnson got his miss. Palmer tried to throw it to Terrell. Simmons picked it off. A little too much pass in there. So especially Jalen Johnson when, when he got that rebound. I mean, he's so big and strong. Kobe Simmons is keeping the swarm alive. That's 23 points now. Yeah, he's, he's a former McDonald's All-American. I mean, he's showing why. Guy who left Arizona after one season back in 2017. Roden missed it, a bit of a wild shot. He tried to save it, oh boy, look out. And he threw it into the crowd. Yep, and the fact he was able to save that and, and get that up, I mean, wow. Oh boy, well, if they weren't paying attention, they're paying attention now. Yep, absolutely. That's why you don't look at your phone while the game's going on, guys. <laughs> the basketball may be coming for your face. Right. Simmons, rolling left, stepping back. That is a two. And 25 points. Wow. Simmons single-handedly keeping the swarm in this game. If you're going to wear the Kobe Grinches, you got to play well. And Simmons has played well. Yes, you do. Steal, Malado, give up, finish. And the swarm have got the lead again. Life comes at you fast in this game of basketball. You have to take every possession serious. Garugi just had the finish for Greensboro. Edwards for Bayheim, who didn't have the space to let it go. Tough catch, Jalen Johnson. Tap, yes, Palmer. Yep, that's incredible uh, the way Johnson and the defender were, were tangled up. But good job for Palmer. We've talked about all night what he's been, how he's been able to deliver. Higgins gave it up. Deroji. Rebound. Sneed was in the midst of the battle there, and it is going to be Cruz basketball. Check it. Swarm basketball after all of that. Palmer can't believe it. He's like, I got knocked down. But <laughs> let's see here after that shot misses. Oh, wow. Yeah. Palmer did get knocked down. But I'm not a great lip reader, but I believe he just asked, where was the foul? Yeah, right. <laughs> Guess we'll never know. It's an ongoing oh, mystery, Reggie. Oh, and this isn't the game that you ask too much, because you will get a tech this game. Yep. We've had four different technicals already between the two teams. Simmons, no whistle that time. He's wondering where the whistle was. Edwards is feeling it. Uh, that time he got a little cute. Pass was picked off. Simmons. Crutcher back to Simmons. Kobe Simmons likes this matchup on Jalen Johnson. Not that time on the three. Roden rebound. Deroji tipped it away from behind. You can kind of see that coming. They'll get it back to him. He was trying to dunk it down, and it's a foul. Yep, and wow, it's, some, it's a lot of physical plays and, and at-the-rim plays. And you see Palmer who feels, hey, I, I think he hit my headband off, so. Anthony Deroji, three points per game in about 10 minutes per game. The guy who played his college ball at Florida. We're going to let him shoot the free throws here. Mm -hmm. 
Little bit of noise, no problems for Anthony. Nope. Sure he's used to those crowds playing yeah, at right. the University of Florida. There's some loud crowds in the SEC. Heard of them. Absolutely. Jalen Johnson looking for a friend. He's got it to Kyler Edwards. Edwards turning and scoring again. Showing he's not just a shooter, Abel. Edwards able to turn the corner and get to the basket as well. Maladon inside. Tough shot. He had the answer. What a change of direction. I mean, he went right full speed, and Beheim did a good job cutting him off. But he was able just to adjust back left like it was nothing. This is turning into a heck of a basketball game. Buddy Beheim. At that time, scored 10 points in the third quarter. Hasn't scored yet in the fourth. Roji fouled again. Looking some miscommunication by the crews there. Roji able to get away on that slip. They're feeding that number 15 down there. And he's able to take advantage. He's going back to the line. Right now, D.J. Baker is hoping that Greensboro can't extend the lead again. It's a team that's led by as many as 12 today. Cruz led by five coming into the quarter, but just like this game, Reggie, the script keeps flipping. Yep, it does. This is pro basketball. That's one thing you haven't seen many of, the timeouts. So Coach D.J. wants to kind of figure things out. Eight minutes to go. Greensboro and the Motor City Cruz playing for the second time in about 36 hours, and this is turning into a really good game in the Motor City. In the NBA, what's happening next is happening now. We hunger for another shot. Let's eat. We got the brow, the cluck, the spider, and Tyrannosaurus Lou. Come on, really? Hey, Demar, we got the kicks, right? Let's see. Oh. Yeah, we got them. This is the non-stop, never boring, make it new, every night National Basketball Association. And that's all before tip-off. Restoration Disaster Services stands on the front line with policyholders to ensure that any property loss experienced is remedied in its entirety. Where most homeowners and contractors throw in the towel, URDS is just getting started. For a free damage and claim estimate, call United Restoration at 877-772-8737. That's 877-772-URDS. They're throwing away t-shirts. So that is why it is all of a sudden hard to hear on Education Day. <laughs> Reggie, I'll say it before and I'll say it again. There is nothing human beings love more in this world than a free t-shirt at a sports game. <laughs> at all. Nothing. Well, the mix between that and they don't have to be in school today, they're at a game, I would be screaming too. <laughs> they got the best of both worlds. As for the basketball game they're watching, give credit to the Greensboro Swarm, right? A team that was leading by a bunch at halftime, seven points. Then they saw the Crews explode to start the second half. Buddy Beheim shot the ball really well. Kyler Edwards got going again. And now the Swarm have bounced back to take the lead. What little tweaks here do you think the Crews will make to take the lead back? Well, it looks like this they've settled that this is their lineup. For some reason, I think Sykes might be out or hurt or um, some something where he, we won't see him again. So you're going to play with what you have, and that's leaning on Bayheim and Edwards. Here is Edwards. A rare miss. Buddy Bayheim the rebound. Inside, Roberts the finish. There it is. We talked about that those two were involved. Edwards shot, Bayheim got the rebound, and... Good job of Roberts finishing that play. Back down to a one-point game. Simmons, not that time. Beheim cleared the rebound. 
Jones on the go. Stops. Throws it out. Beheim. This man is scorching hot. And there's no hesitation. He's coming up to shoot that ball. 20 points. One of his better games of the year. Malado working on Roberts. The 21-year-old from France going to the line. He's, he's constantly paced. <laughs> you know, never looks rushed. Here the crews are making a run, just got the lead back. And, I mean, he's just casually getting in there, getting the foul. Guys like that love a matchup on a bigger guy. All right, time to go to work. Oh, they do. And you know what? The, the hard part is they never settle. Mm -hmm. So some guys just get the matchup with a bigger guy and just throw up some jump shot. He doesn't settle. Jones couldn't take advantage after Malado missed the free throw. But the Jones looking to kind of deliver a, um, a, a knockout blow, per se, but it didn't work out. Crutcher left alone, and he took advantage. That is not a person who you want to leave alone. He has too much game for that. Back and forth we go. It's a bit like a boxing match. Counter punch, counter punch. Someone is going to have the knockout. Roden, not that time, but a foul after the shot. Yep, good job of Roden coming off that screen and being able to get that up on the glass to get fouled. You see it. And, and, I mean, I, you saw this last game. He literally goes fast. <laughs> so when he comes around that curl, some guy, for example, Melodone, his pace, it's controlled, it's slow, it's um, kind of methodical, very good. But Roden, he gets it, he's gone. I mean, it's just different style players. Hit the free throw to make two. Here's another lead change. The crews have got it back. Kobe Simmons, stop the dribble. Sims spinning, missing a short shot. It is still Swarm basketball. And the crews have to make sure that they get these rebounds because giving the Swarm a second chance is, is not how you close a game out. Simmons had to be careful with those Toe taps to make sure it wasn't a backcourt. Now he'll shoot. Wave off the shot. Foul before the shot. And one person I noticed that we're missing this game in general for the Swarm is the ever popular Leangelo Ball. He's out with a sprained ankle. I know there are a lot of kids who are looking forward to seeing him during this time, but he's out with a sprained ankle. You know, there are a few last names in basketball that. Uh, Make people as interested as ball, right? Between yeah. Lonzo, Leangelo, Lamelo. Oh my God, Lavar. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> can't. I mean, it start. It started. It started with him. But I mean, look, what? What? Three pro sons. Uh, that's just incredible. And you know, whether you like Lavar's approach, kind of how it works. Something works. <laughs> that, that's who I've always come back to with Lavar. Is you can say what you want about him. That's a nice finish by Jalen Crutcher. The man did get three sons playing professional basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's some some people's entire family bloodline won't play professional basketball, and they have three of them right now. Another one is what I, the Holiday. Yep. Drew Holiday, who incredibly just made his second All-Star game ten years apart. And don't forget as well, you talk about families. Don't forget about the St. Brown family. Of course, Amon Ra. His brother, Equinemius, yes. plays in the NFL. <laughs> we see Amon Ra play so well down the road for the Lions. Yep. Jared Roden missing the shot as you're getting a foul. A look at that last play. Look at a sloppy ball here the last few seconds. Jones, lob, Roden, hello! That's how you clean it up. <laughs> and, and it's Mr. Roden. 14 and 9. Trying to go for another double-double. That would be his sixth. Foul stops play and stops the defense, Jan. Yep, and Rogue got his hand caught in the cookie jar there. 
Got to pay attention here. That is the fourth foul on Jared Roden, and it sends the swarm to the bonus. Yep, and you see here the throw ahead. Oh, you can see that. You can just see those alley-oops developing. When the ball goes to one side and that defender starts to shade over, good job of Roden being able to come over and catch it. Right now he's watching Sims take a free throw. You know, when the scoreboard asks the kids to get loud, they, they make sure to follow directions. Oh, I'm just saying. Absolutely. So they need a scoreboard in all the classes. Right. The, the, Pay know. attention. Right. Buddy Beheim, tie game. Buddy's on fire. The old NBA jam, he's on fire. 23 points and 16 in the second half. Crutcher, oh my goodness. That was from the 248. These guards, Simmons and Crutcher, I mean, they are talented. We may be in the 313 area code, but that one was from the suburbs. Yep. Jones to Johnson, off the deck. If he hits the free throw, we're tied again. Yep, good job of the left hand, because that right hand shot wasn't available, but. Good job of Johnson coming in and using his fundamentals. You'll see there he caught it. Now, remember, he was passing that out earlier. But, no, don't pass that. You're the biggest guy in there. Go ahead and go up. Jalen Johnson off 31 points on Monday night. 13 today. There's three big ones. Tied again at 109. I'm sure they're going to be going to Crutcher or Simmons here on these plays. Loader, Crutcher missed it. Long rebound, tap to Jones. Jones will find Beheim. Buddy, Beheim cannot miss. <laughs> what a find by Jones. Great job of knowing Beheim was on the other side of the floor, and Beheim was able to knock it down. That is 19 in the second half. Somewhere his dad smiles. Absolutely. Simmons, not even close. Yep. It's hard to go shot for, even though they're the challenges, it's hard to go shot for shot with Beheim. Buddy Beheim. Yes, a last name that basketball fans know very, very well. He's making his own name. And the Crews, who are down by seven and a half, are about three minutes away from their fourth straight win. Buddy Beheim, scorching hot. They say that this is a game of interest, but I disagree. This is a game of desire and will. Four quarters of epic drama that plays out in real time, right before our very eyes. If every season begins the same way, with a desire to win. Those with the will to put in the effort and time put themselves in the best position to achieve their desire. This is why we go to work early and come home late. Why we go so hard and why we put in all these hours. Because we have a desire to be great and the will to become everything we dreamed of and more. So when the drama's thick and it comes down to just those few precious inches, we have no doubt what the outcome will be. Because we have the will to outwork anyone to get what we desire. It doesn't matter if it's inches or a hundred yards. We want it more and we're going to take it. Coming down the wire at Wayne State Fieldhouse. The Crews are 258 away from making it a four game win streak. Kyler Edwards with 23, but the man of the game has been 27 in red, white, and blue. That's Buddy Beheim, 23 year old from Syracuse, is making turbo dance and everyone in this crowd happy. <laughs> Beheim's dropped 19 in the second half, and the Crews are trying to close out another dub here, Reggie. 
Yep, absolutely. So these next two or three possessions are going to be crucial. And you got to think, they're not going to just leave Beheim open. So who else is going to be able to step up? At that time for Jones. Hagen's got ahead of the pack, and he finished. Good job of Hagen's getting out and getting that layup. He's played well, too. Here's Jalen Johnson looking around. Jones now spinning. Backing it out with five. Inside Jalen Johnson. Foul. Yep. Johnson, I like him on those rolls to the basket. This isn't necessarily the game to pop because the swarm aren't that big. So it's not like you got a big guy rim protecting. This is the game to roll. Still a one for two shot. Remember, under two minutes, they make you shoot both free throws. We're not at that point yet, and Jalen Johnson takes advantage. Yep, and good job. Big time trip up the floor for both clubs. Coming up on two minutes to go. Another whistle. Yep, and Jared Roden again. And Simmons is able just to kind of um, bait him into those contact, you know, away from the ball fouls. It's a case where Roden knows Simmons is about to pop up. So Simmons kind of turns and gets his body into him before. Roden, who's a physical player, what does he do? His natural instinct is just to you know, get physical back, and here you got free throws. So smart, that's smart by Simmons, and Roden has to be aware of that. And so now five on him, Simmons hits the free throw. Again, not under two minutes, so they can make it one for two. Jones the bounce to Johnson. Off the deck, got the roll, and got the foul too. Wow, there's a lot, there's a lot at the rim for Jalen Johnson tonight. Setting those screens and rolling, it's, he's just getting a lot out of it. We're going to get a coach's challenge here. Danielle Marshall, the acting head coach with Sir Camp, Sir and Camp ejected from the game, challenges the call. But either way, Reggie, that's a big bucket for Jalen Johnson. And we can talk about Buddy Beheim all we want. He's been awesome in the second half. But how about Jalen Johnson, too? Pretty much invisible in the first half. He's up to 17 points in the game now. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's been rolling to the rim. So I, I just love it because everybody can't score off isolation. You have certain guys who score off isolation. But Jalen Johnson has been, hey, I'm going to be in these spots, catch these passes, go up and finish, or I'm going to screen, I'm going to roll, I'm going to go up strong. And on this, so it depends on how these referees interpret it. This happened a few games ago. The defender, the swarm are saying the defender's hands were up. And when you look at the replay, you're going to see um, Whaley, I think it was, his hands were not as up as they, I think the swarm thought they were. So it's going to be up to the referee's interpretation. Look, I think it's, I don't think that's up. You know, and I'm a big guy. I, yeah, I, I love giving big guys the benefit of the doubt, but here we're just talking about basketball. I don't think that that was straight up hands. I thought his hands were over Johnson's head, and when Johnson went up it. So we'll see how the referees, what they define as hands up. Well, those officials have been an active presence in this game. They have issued four technicals. They kicked Jordan Surenkamp, Greensboro's coach, out of the game for technicals. They kicked James Booknight out of the game for a flagrant two foul. I mean, all the kids here have gotten an action-packed basketball game. Mm -hmm. Unsuccessful challenge. Yeah. So, Reggie, you nailed it. Yeah, I, I just didn't because I love giving the big guys benefit of the doubt, but I, I don't think that that was um, I don't think that that was straight up. All right, so big free throw coming here for Jalen Johnson. Makes it a two-possession game, barring, of course, a four-point play. Here's one last look. Yep, and I think Whaley's kind of moving into him, and I don't think it's, it's straight up. There you go, big free throw, and Jalen knocked it down. Crews are trying to make it four straight wins. Got to buckle down on D here, down the stretch. But it's a big stop here. 
the Swarm who have so many options. Simmons, Crutcher, Hagens. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's hard to stop all of them. So you really got to dig down. Touch pass, Sims. No good rebound, Edwards. Yep. And a player outside of those three I mentioned shot in. <laughs> they got the stop. Bruins will bleed as much clock as they can. Where do they go on this uber important possession? Johnson, he hit it. That's the floater. That's the one I've been waiting for him to shoot. And you can't always, you know, muscle your way into the basket, even though he's done a good job. But I like to see that shot. The hopes for the swarm are dwindling down. They led by 12 in the first half. They led by seven at halftime. But this crew's team is just rolling right now. Yep, they are. And it's been kind of the pick and roll play and taking advantage of the middle. Leaner for Jones. Why the heck not? Good job of Jones having patience and being able to find his open area. Chandre Jones, an impressive afternoon at the office. 20 points. Edwards, Jones, Beheim, Johnson have all scored at least 20. Yep, and that's balance right there. How do you stop a certain player? Chandre Jones, who as you've talked about, Reggie, we don't know why Kiefer Sykes has not played in the second half, but we haven't seen him. So Chandre gets the play, and the former Richmond Spider, who is one of the better players in the history of that program, he's saying, okay, let me play and watch this. Yep, and, and it's funny, I, every time we broadcast, I say, um, Chandre Jones, who you never really see play bad. Like, I'm serious, you never really see him play bad. He always comes off the bench and gives them some kind of lift. Buddy Beheim, 26 points. He is one off the scoring lead in the game. I have a sneaking suspicion Buddy may be our post-game guest. <laughs> yep. He has scored 20 points in the second half. 19, beg your pardon. Simmons, the shot and the hit for the Swarm. They're still alive. You're always alive when you got players like that on the floor. DJ Baker will call timeout. And you know, this point in the game, Reggie, right? G League is about development. So when the guys get up there to the big club, you want to be part of situations like this. For both teams, right? The Swarm, they're not out of this game. Simmons has got to hit shots like that. And my DJ Baker just called the timeout. Let's not make sure any funny business yep. goes on here. Let's get this thing to the finish line. Absolutely, and you want to start kind of preparing. So you're going. So what you're going to do is you're going to set your offense. You're going to kind of form your plan of attack, but you're also going to lay out defensive scenarios. Hey, if we make this, we'll be a five. You know they're going to be a three. Let's switch everything. Or if we miss this, they might get the easy two. You're trying to lay out the next kind of two to three trips in case you don't get another timeout and get a chance back to talk to your guys. I have no idea why Buddy is frowning. You should be smiling with the way you played in the second half, my friend. Uh, exactly. I, I, I smile when I just made two points, let alone if I had 20-something in a half. I, oh, geez. I, I might not be able to finish playing for my teasing. Get the inbound to Roden. Bounce to Jones. Greensboro all over him. Johnson will take the three. Let's see if that ends up being an interesting decision. There's still time for the Swarm. They get it up the floor to Whaley. Simmons hoist. No. Sims rebound. Sims now tries. Rolled in, and Greensboro still alive. Yep. That off, uh, offensive rebound that kept him alive. Cruz could have closed it out. What about that three from Johnson? Are you okay with him taking that? Yeah, I got to look back. It looked like there was time, more time on the shot clock. And honestly, I think the Swarm were going to foul. It looked like they were going to foul him, so not necessarily. So now what does DJ Baker tell these guys? Now he's saying, let's get it in the hands of our best free throw shooter. So you made any substitutions, first of all. 
put your free throw shooters in. Now he's telling them, let's, you know, let's be strong with the ball. Run through the ball. Run through the ball means when we're making a long pass, like meet the ball. Yes. Don't let somebody step in front of you to steal it. And on defense, let's whatever our defense is, whether we're going to switch everything, uh, who's going to guard Simmons, things like that. All right, so the five on the floor with Edwards inbounding is Johnson, Roden, Beheim, and Jones. The inbound into the backcourt and Jones. He's able to take a lot of time off the clock. They finally foul him with 2.6. They couldn't catch him. <laughs> you see Jones smiling. He's like, yeah, I played tag when I was little. That's what it looked like he was playing, just kind of uh, tag out there. Yep, just good, good elusive ball handling, and that really was helpful in running off a lot of times. Remember, he shoots two. First one perfect. Hit this one, and the game's over. Barring something very, very interesting yeah. happening. Yeah, exactly. I've seen crazy, but uh, I don't know about this one. If he makes this. Bingo. 22 for Chandre. Danielle Marshall will call a quick timeout for Greensboro. That'll get the ball to half court. And now, really, the only focus for the crews is somehow don't foul someone shooting at three. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. So just let it go. Let them have it. And make sure you get the rebound in case it comes off. One more inbound for Ashton Hagen. Hagen's looking for contact, nothing came. The shot was late anyway. And one of the hottest teams in the G League does it again. It's eight out of 12 and four in a row for the Motor City Crows. DJ Baker's club just spent the last week at home and uh, they took advantage. Yeah, they did and good job of the crews, man. They really found their specific parts of the game to come, uh, to come around. Kudos to Beheim for being a big part of that. Buddy Beheim, the leading scorer today for the Crews, guy who scores 10 points per game, 26 in this one, and 19 in the second half, 10 in the third, 9 in the fourth. And it wasn't just the three-point shooting for Buddy. It was some two-pointers as well that really got the graduate of Syracuse going. Yep, he became magnetic. Uh, because remember the play that you called out where he came off that screen, the entire Swarm team went over to him once you start knocking those shots down. All right, speak of the devil, there he is. Buddy Beheim joining us on the floor. So you finished with 26. You had seven at halftime, which means you scored 19 in the second half. What happened? Oh, man, just uh, just getting in the rhythm. I mean, uh, thank, thankful for my teammates. All thanks to my teammates. Credit to them for finding me early. I hit my first shot out of the break. Coach drew up a great uh, play for me out of the half. And uh, once I knocked that down, got one in transition, you know, I was going to be aggressive and use my size, got inside the lane. Crutcher's a, a good defender, quick defender, but I was able to rise over him a couple times and just stay in a rhythm. Um, like I said, getting in transition, just guys were really fine to me today, and I credit them for that. But uh, it was good to get going and, and finish this break strong. For us normal humans who don't know what the feeling's like, when you're hot like you were in the second half, what does it feel like being in that zone? Oh, it's great, man. Every every shot you get, you just want you you want to hunt. I mean, I took a couple deep ones that I probably sure enough might have rushed a little, but you know, when you hit two or three in a row, you want to take the next next time you touch the ball, you want to shoot it because you think it's going in no matter what, who's there, whatever it is. It's a great feeling, but uh, also being able to just you know fly around and draw attention, I think after it be a good decoy, and uh, you know it's good to see some go down. Definitely, that's how you get going as a shooter. And what does this recent stretch of play say about the team? You guys. Yeah. Have won four out of the last five in this homestand, eight out of the last 12. What's this last little good run of ball say about you guys? Oh, that's who we are. I mean, we're a tough team. We're, we're resilient. We're going to keep going. We had injuries. Guys were out, you know, banged up here and there. But we all came together and we play hard. We, you know, we're coached very hard and play hard and practice hard. And uh, credit to everyone. Credit to the coaches, the, the front office for believing in us and uh, the guys who are just sticking together through it all. And we know that this is what we're capable of. 
Buddy, it's been a good 12 hours. Ranked win for the Orange at home last <laughs> night against NC State. Yes, sir. And now a win here today. Yeah, Congrats, man. Thanks. Go enjoy it. I'll be, I'll be there Saturday. Let's go, Cuse. Uh, appreciate it, guys. Go, Cruz. From one Syracuse alum to another. Buddy, thank you. Heck of a game, man. Doing it for the 3-1-5 today. The pride of Fayetteville, New York. Buddy Beheim getting the job done. Syracuse and the Motor City Crews, both winners within the last 14 hours. Oh, there's a smile on my face. Syracuse and Motor City Crews connections being strong today. Crews win this one by four, and we're back to wrap it up after this. We begin with your dream, your drive, your grit, the heart and vision of every member of your team. We take it all, and from those threads of greatness, we weave a uniform of a champion. In many ways, our sport is just like yours. We've brought together a team of elite designers. We've put in the time and the sweat, perfecting our craft over 14 years. We've outfitted thousands of teams for thousands of victories, approaching each new project, each new game, like it's the only one we'll ever play. And let's be honest, we've done it all with a quality so unmatched that some can't help but call it perfection. You know, it's more than just a shirt. Look like a champion, play like a champion. A champion powered by the G. Hashtag G Brand USA. G Brand USA. Elite design, unmatched quality, American pride. We're proudly made in the USA. Are you prepared to be transformed into a better version of yourself? Shaped into a force that others can't imagine. We are part of something bigger. A force that never quits. America's Navy, forged by the sea. Check us out at Navy.com. What a day for the Motor City Crews. A win, four out of the last five, four in a row and eight out of 12. Reggie, we just talked to Buddy Beheim, who scored 26 for the Crews, but balanced scoring for them today to fight off what, as you said, was honestly a really good effort from the Greensboro Swarm today. It was, the Swarm were motivated. After losing Monday's game, they came out motivated, moving the ball, they were playing the right way. But then once they started, the kind of the technicals and the other things started, it really gave the crews an opportunity to really get back in this game. Yeah, and Kyler Edwards as well, that big third quarter buzzer beater. It's those little moments in the game, right, where you point back and saw the pendulum shift. It's kind of like what Beheim just told us after the game, similar to what Jared Roden told us and Jalen Johnson told us in interviews after each of the last three games. It's just the way we're playing basketball right now. Battle-tested bunch, and you can see it out there. Yep, it is. And what that's that becomes your style. And so even whether you're down a few points, once you believe you have a style, you always think that you have a chance. Their style in the second half was a lot of that. Find 27 and let them shoot. <laughs> Absolutely. And you mentioned some of the other players. I mean, Edwards and uh, Edwards and. Jones, who also had great games. you got a lot of guys who are stepping up, and that's what you need as a team. And look at the rebounding battle as well. That was a huge reason why the Swarm were up at halftime. It's why the Crews won on Monday night, and they flipped the script in that second half. Yeah, they were able to turn that around. And some of those were offensive rebounds. The Crews were able to get second shots as well. So they came on, they played a very determined second half. So now we see if the Crews can take all these good vibes on the road next week. Starting Wednesday and then Friday, they'll be at the Sixers affiliate in Delaware, back home on the 25th to take on Raptors 9:05. Then one more home game coming up this month against the Lakeland Magic 
on the 27th. As we see among the scoring leaders, Simmons led all scores in the game with 30, but that balanced scoring for the Crews, led by Beheim and Edwards, as we've talked about, it's a huge reason why they're smiling in the locker room with another win. Absolutely, and the fact that four players had 20 points, that's not common. That's hard to do, and if you think about it from different areas, you got Edwards and Beheim, who did it behind the three-point line. Jones, who's a mid-range monster, kind of free-throw line jumpers, and then Jalen Johnson, who was scoring at the rim. There's room for everybody. What a stretch of basketball for the Crews. Hey, when you play a game at 11 in the morning, you may as well win the darn thing, and that's exactly what the Crews did today. Thanks for joining us wherever you were watching. Shout out to all the administrators, students, fans, and attendants today, and all the, the people who got here early to work this event as well. This is uh, a challenge sometimes and all the people behind the scenes, and we appreciate their hard work most definitely about that. For Reggie Butler, our executive producer, Alex Westfall, and our entire crew working hard on a Wednesday morning into early afternoon, Evan Stockton saying so long. It's going to be a happy lunch for everyone who's a Motor City Cruise fan. A four-point win buoyed by a bunch of guys scoring over 20 points. Bayheim and Edwards leading the show. Go have a great rest of your Wednesday. This copyrighted broadcast of the NBA G League may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the express written consent of the NBA G League.